Okay, so last week, we talked about that we've been given the greatest gift, that because of Jesus Christ, he sent the Holy Spirit, and we've been given spiritual gifts. And um, I challenged y'all and uh, to, if you hadn't already done so, take the spiritual gifts inventory, which is on our website. If you already knew your spiritual gifts, you were challenged to live that out in one way unique this week. So, show of hands, a whole, I know, how many of you took the spiritual gifts inventory or lived out your spiritual gift in one way this week? Okay, a few, all right, thank you. I say that not to embarrass anyone or to put you on the hot seat, but rather to show how hard it really is sometimes to live out our next steps with God. Our calendars get so filled. You know, I'm even told in retirement, your calendars are busier than when you were working. And if you're working, you've got to work all day, you got laundry, groceries, all of that. Plus, if you're of a certain age, you just feel like you're a taxi driver to your kids. And it's tough to find time. And so that's where we begin this morning. Also, I'd like to celebrate that 13 of you, this is a, that's a big number when you consider if you've just been through membership class in the last few years, you've already taken your spiritual gifts inventory, but 13 of you took the survey on our websites and received feedback and identified your spiritual gifts. So that's great. And that leads us to where we are today. This is kind of a, not a sermon series, but each week we're going to build upon our spiritual gifts. And so today it comes to how we take our next steps, how we live our faith beyond worship here uh, one hour a week or worshiping online, but how we take that into the world on a daily basis. So um, I just had a, I have a, co a ministry coach, and I had a coaching session, and she challenged me, she's like, because everything's so weird post-pandemic, what is church? What does church look like? And I said to her, well, I think it's a group of people who believe in Jesus getting together to have fun and to make a difference in the world. And that's what I see at Aldersgate, that we could be a group of people who gather to have fun, sometimes talk about Jesus, and go and make a difference in the name of Jesus in this world. That's church. That's church. And so our scripture this morning comes from 1 Peter chapter 4, verses 1 to 11. So then, since Christ suffered physical pain, you must arm yourselves with the same attitude he had and be ready to suffer too. For if you have suffered physically for Christ, you have finished with sin. You won't spend the rest of your lives chasing your own desires, but you will be anxious to do the will of God. You have had enough in the past of the evil things that godless people enjoy their immorality and lust, their feasting and drunkenness and wild parties, and their terrible worship of idols. Of course, your former friends are surprised when you no longer plunge into the flood of wild and destructive things they do. So they slander you. But remember, that they will have to face God who stands ready to judge everyone, both the living and the dead. That is why the good news was preached to those who are now dead. So, all the, so although they were destined to die like all people, they now live forever with God in the Spirit. The end of the world is coming soon. Therefore, be earnest and disciplined in your prayers. But most important of all, continue to show deep love for each other, for love covers a multitude of sins. Cheerfully share your home with those who need a meal or a place to stay. 
God has given each of you a gift from his great variety of spiritual gifts. Use them well to serve one another. Do you have the gift of speaking? Then speak as if God himself were speaking through you. Do you have the gift of helping others? Do it with all the strength and energy that God supplies. Then everything you do will bring glory to God through Jesus Christ. All power and glory, all glory and power to him forever and ever. Amen. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. So, um, as always with the scripture, for me it's helpful to have the background, to know what's going on. And so 1 Peter is writing to the churches in what are today modern-day Turkey. The background of the people in those towns at the time would have been heavily Greco-Roman. There, wa- there wouldn't have been a strong Jewish presence yet in the diaspora, and, and so it was Greco-Roman. And they literally worshipped stone idols, uh, as 1 Peter writes. And they are following Jesus. To follow Jesus in that context meant they had, they had to put everything behind because it would, have, it would have been, it's called Hellenistic, the Greco-Roman society with the worship of idols. They wouldn't have understood any of the background of what we call the Old Testament scriptures and what Jesus quotes throughout. And so in following Jesus, Peter even talks about how they've lost friends, how their friends slander them. It would have meant economic loss, especially for the middle class and the merchants, because why would you buy from that crazy Christian when you can buy from your friend who's been your friend and worships the same idols as you all the time? So following Jesus meant some struggles. In addition, we believe this uh, letter was written during the time of Nero, who was one of the worst emperors to persecute the Christians. So they're experiencing uh, real um, persecution from Nero, loss of social network in their previous friends group, and economics because People don't want to do business with someone who's strange. And and what, Jesus? What? And so the language in 1 Peter is very urgent. And what he does is he goes back and forth between two themes. First, he talks about the riches of the faith. Because he wants to encourage them, even in the suffering. And so he says, you know, look at all that we have. That this is a great gift from God. We've been given spiritual gifts. We've been given eternity and Christ's very presence. The riches of the faith. And yet, he'll transition from that immediately to, it's our duty to follow. So because of all of these riches, it's our duty to take the next steps and follow building upon the great gifts that we've been given. And so it's for us now, 2,000 years later, to still, still hear, wow, we've been given so much through Jesus Christ. And it's important for us to take those next steps into the world. And so he starts, Peter, in verse 1, So then, since Christ suffered physical pain, You must arm yourselves with the attitude he had and be ready to suffer too. For if you have suffered physically for Christ, you have finished with sin. Since Christ suffered, you must now suffer. Now the original listeners and readers of this letter would have been facing all sorts of suffering, physical suffering at the hands of Nero, suffering financially and socially. And now, while we hopefully will never have to face an emperor Nero, we all suffer. To suffer for Jesus is to do things like 
That work colleague, you know which one, tells that awful joke that violates all of our values. And instead of just walking away, it means standing up and saying, that's not my values, I do not like to hear that. And then facing what that could mean. To suffer for Christ is to be very clear in a world that is different from us. This is how I live, and this is why. So our next steps include some suffering. It also means suffering of our time, right? To, to, get all, to stop binging the latest show and invest in someone, call someone, live for Christ. And then he goes on, Peter, in verse 2, and he says, you won't spend the rest of your lives chasing your own desires, but you will be anxious. You will be anxious to do the will of God. You see, Peter is is emphasizing the need and the presence of the church in this world. When you follow, you will be anxious, excited, on fire to do the will of God. And that's who we're called to be, to be anxious to do the will of God. Now, if you attended our, our annual meeting in December, you, you heard that we have identified three goals that we're going to work on in 2024. Uh, and we spent the last, since August, the leadership kind of preparing and putting things in place. And our first goal is to grow. To grow our faith, knowing that we're never done on this. It's about the journey, as one of the songs just said. It's not about the arrival. And so we're going to grow our faith. There's going to be studies during What's Up Wednesdays, and there's a meal to make it easy so you can come out and eat and grow your faith. Then we're going to talk about community and ways to be the community in this community uh, by opening our building to an array of other groups, by, by going out into our community instead of just sitting here and waiting. And then the third goal is fellowship. Because we identified that post-pandemic, like, we've, we've lost the ability to connect. Or rather, we're connected all the time with our cell phones always on us. You want to see a teen get anxious? Take their phone for an hour. You know, because you can connect, right? There's social media, you can YouTube shorts, you, you're always got something to do. But then what has happened is we've lost the ability to connect, right? I mean, I'm even of this. I've, I've the Xers and down. Why in the world would you actually talk on the telephone to someone? I mean, that's what text is for, right? Uh, You want to just, like, talk face to face? That's radical, right? And we've lost that. And and we know in Aldersgate, we want to connect to have fun to then be renewed to go out. And so our third goal is fellowship. Create ways that we can connect with each other that allow us to know, oh, we are not alone in the world struggling to live our faith. And to have fun doing that, and then to go out and share that with others, or invite them. And so a team has been working for several months, working very hard, on uh, this survey. So we have a survey that we'd like to take. And this identifies like ways that you uh, connect, or ways that you like to uh, gather, or hobbies. Um, and so, yes. We're going to take a survey. Uh, On the screen is the link. It's only about 40 quick questions, you know. Um, So if you have a smartphone, I invite you to pull that out now. If you don't have a smartphone or it's not scanning for some reason, it is in the worship handout as well, the QR code. Yep, this is your time. You can move around. How often do I say, hey, pull your phones out? Let's play. 
So um, if you haven't yet finished, you can go ahead and complete this while, while we finish worship uh, as well. <clears throat> so uh, verse, thank you for doing that because that will help us know how to connect each other. And so verse 2, it says, you won't spend the rest of your lives chasing your own desires, but you will be anxious to do the will of God. This is where our lives begin to change. That when we follow, it's about living differently. It's not, you, you won't spend the rest of your lives chasing your desires, Peter says, but rather you'll want, you'll want to do the will of God and live that out. And so it's for us to be that on fire for Jesus. That it doesn't become about us, but about anxious to do the will of God. So our next step is please God instead of pleasing ourselves. Oh, lost my position. In Advent, um, on our last Sunday on December 17th, we talked about the presence that because of Christmas and Jesus' birth, we always have the presence of God with us, the Holy Spirit. And we mentioned that, I mentioned that it's important to practice that. Like you have to stay in tune with God. And so often we tune everything out, don't we? Like, or, or we tune everything in. You know, we're listening to a podcast while we drive and the kids in the back seat still talking and we're, and, living for Jesus each and every day. Peter came from a Jewish background, and so there was so much that he already understood as Jesus was preaching, because Jesus was unfolding what the prophets has talked about. And yet, as it went on, Peter really faced a struggle between Judaism and living out the Christian faith it, with the Jewish laws or opening up the gospel to the Greco-Roman world. And yet, so much about that was closed. You know, and Peter had a dream about that because he couldn't go to Cornelius' house to eat because of the Jewish food laws. They often separated. And still today, if you have friends who are Orthodox Jews, you know how difficult it is to eat with them because you can only eat in their home because of the food rules. But with the, the gift of Jesus Christ, we are no longer separate, but we're called to live in the world. And Peter had a dream and a vision from God, and his perspective changed entirely. And so as he writes to the church, the churches in what is modern-day Turkey, Asia Minor, um, he uses words that uh, I have always loved that jump out to me. You know, Paul writes it, be in the world and not of the world. Peter says it in two different ways in this letter. He says, you are foreigners in a strange land. So they were living in like the kingdom of the Roman Empire. But you're a foreigner there because you are a member of the kingdom of God. Another way that he, he writes about it um, in this letter is he calls us resident aliens. That we live in a culture that is alien to us and foreign. And yet we're called to live here and be a part of it to live out our faith. Not to go and be separate, but to live in. And that's part of what was, they, they were suffering with in 1 Peter, the original hearers, because they had lost everything. Their friends, he, he writes how their friends say, and they just slander them. And, and don't talk to them or ridicule them the Christians, and how they've lost that economic side because people won't shop with them. And it reminds us the struggles they had then and how they can be our struggles today that we may not be popular, 
but we are called to be peculiar, to look different in this world, to think of ourselves as resident aliens. The idea that we uh, live in the U.S., but our true home is the kingdom of God. And that means our values, not the values of maybe what our friends or our workplace participate in. So to be peculiar, not popular. And then Peter goes on to tell us three ways to live out our next steps. Be loving. He writes, most important of all, continue to show deep love for each other, for love covers a multitude of sins which indeed it does. And we live in a world that is desperate for love. Because if you scroll your media feed, your social media, if you um, turn on the news, actually read a newspaper, it's all about division and hate and not talking to each other and condemning one side or the other. And yet, we are called to love, because it covers a multitude of sins, Peter writes. And so, who do you need to show love to this week? You know there's someone in your sphere. There's that person at work. There's that Eeyore in your life. Who needs love? And then be hospitable. Verse 9 says, open your home. Now, if you're an introvert like me, oh my gosh, the thought of inviting people in my home makes me anxious, and it takes me a week to prepare, because, you know, like, I just can't sit and binge watch Netflix. Um, you know, you got to clean, you got people coming. It's a, for many of us, it's a lot of work. And I think that's what Peter's talking about. It takes time and effort to be hospitable, to welcome others, to like go out of our way to say, would you like to come over? And so we're called to be that in the world, in a world of division, to be hospitable, to love everyone. And then he writes in verse 11, do it all with the strength and energy that God supplies then everything you do will bring glory to God through Jesus Christ. And so we're called to be generous. To be generous, because it says if you've got these spiritual gifts, Peter follows up on Paul's writing from last week, if you've got spiritual gifts, use them. Be generous of your time and giving of who you are and giving of your financial to change the world around us. Do it all with the strength and energy that God supplies. Then, then, everything you do will bring glory to God through Jesus Christ. So, how will you be loving, hospitable, or generous this week? It may come up next week. 